My name is Teresa Burris. I'm from Greensboro, Alabama. I lived here most of my life. And this first picture is a picture of Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King. And as he drove up, he was coming to Greensboro. We were having a mass meeting. Our organization was the Hale County Civic Improvement League, and he came over to speak for us that day. We were having a program. And he always would stop at our house to eat breakfast and take a shower. After he finishes, he would take a shower and then leave. But this particular day when he came, I <clears throat> snapped his picture as he drove up. And I said, look, Doc. And he looked directly at me, and I snapped his picture. And he says to me, why didn't you let me get out and, and pose? He said, you know, black people like to get out and put their hands on the hips and pose. So I said, well, get out then and pose. He gets out and posed, and I saw then that I didn't have another film. So I tell that to everyone that comes through here because it's true. In fact, everything we tell you is true, but that was remarkably true because he thought I did it on purpose. I didn't, but he thought so. Um, the second picture is a picture taken inside of St. Matthew AME Church. And it's a picture of Reverend Shuttlesworth. And that's Dr. King in the middle. And a lot of people think that because he has this booming voice that he would be a great big man. But as you can see, Reverend Shelvesworth and Doc, and Dr. T. Y. Rogers are just average men, and you see, he only come just a little above the shoulders, their shoulders, and that is his daughter, <clears throat> Yolanda. At that time, she was 13 years old, and Marty, Martin Luther III, and he was about six years old. And it was taken inside of St. Matthew Church. Now the third picture over here are pictures of deputy. They're not deputy. They have there have been men in the community, in the county, in the county, that had been deputized just for that day and they didn't have the authority to arrest anyone, but they told them just, your job is just to go down there where they're assembling at that church and beat those niggas. That is your job. And that's what they did. And they could hit hard too. Now this fourth picture is a group of us um, meeting. We're coming out from a meeting at St. Matthew Church. Um, we had been meeting, planning on what we were going to do next because it was so much going on and it was so many things that needed to be done. So we had to stop and plan whether we were going to picket it or whether 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 we were going to march that day or what we were going to do so that's why we had had this meeting we called it a mass meeting and uh, instead of a business meeting of course it could have been called a business meeting but we didn't call it that were any of those uh, white folks local no, 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 no local white people marched or helped us in the civil rights movement uh, because if they did, 
the other white people would ostracize them and be, they might beat them up even. We don't know. But they were afraid. They were afraid to even look at us and and talk to us we, you know, unless they were saying something negative. They, they, they were afraid. Um, this fifth picture here <clears throat> is when we were marching to the courthouse to demonstrate for our right to vote. And they went somewhere, men were working, and found this barricade and brought it and put across and told us we couldn't march anymore. This man here, the, the white deputy with the pistol on his side, he took that pistol and he stuck it right beside each one of our heads and told us that he could take that pistol and shoot each one of us dead and wouldn't anything be done about it. So I told him he just would have to shoot because we weren't going anywhere. And I told him if he did kill us, there would be seven more that would stand up and take our places. So he decided to put his gun back in his holster, which I'm so glad that he did, because there's nothing we could have done. And the sixth picture over here is a picture of uh, Dr. King as he stood in St. Matthew AME Church. It was about two months, I think, prior to him going to Memphis. It wasn't two months. No, it was not two months. It was about three weeks before, because he said that he wouldn't know when he would be coming back through here to see us because he was going to Memphis, Tennessee to help the garbage workers. And that was in March. And you know, he didn't, you know April the 4th was when he was killed. That was in 1968. Had he been in Greensboro um, several times? Oh yes, he had. He would come to Greensboro often, quite often. He'd be. He would come to Greensboro. Would you tell us uh, about the night that uh, you were concerned for his safety in Greensboro? Sure, surely. That was the night that we were having a mass meeting at St. Matthew Church. And the man, a man came in after we had dismissed, we were in the process of dismissing, and told us that two churches was on fire and was burning down. And, and asked, was Dr. King still there? And we said, yes. And they told us not to take him down 14, because this man, drove the long haul trucks coast to continental. He he would go coast to coast and he but he lived here and he was coming in and he saw them coming in from fourteen to Greensboro and he saw the clans on both sides of the road. And cause the clans knew that Dr. King would go back leave he would usually leave going back to Marion and going back to Selma that way and they were waiting on him. So after he told us that, we brought Dr. King down to my mother's house, which is next door. And later on, we brought him over to this house, and we kept him safe here that night. And that's why we called this the safe house. 